Okay, good evening friends. Uh, welcome back for the final session of the year. Right, today we'll be covering uh, Bollinger Band and overlays, overlays uh, as a concept and then we'll drill down into Bollinger Band. Right. So let me save some bandwidth by moving me off from the webcam. Right. So the topic of this discussion is technical overlays uh, with the uh, drill down and uh, uh, drill down on Bollinger Bands, one of the very important indicators uh, for technical analysis. Right. Uh, so, what are technical analysis and what are the concepts, right? So, uh, we'll understand the key concepts. Uh, how does it help you? Number one, trend direction, trend reversals, support and resistance, trading strategies, some of the trading strategies we'll cover on Bollinger Band and some of the complementary indicators that you should be using with Bollinger Band, right? So, uh, key technical over overlays, uh, some of the important indicators uh, or some of the important technical overlays are Bollinger Band, Super Trend, Ichimoku Cloud, Parabolic SAR, and Moving Average. We'll definitely have a. So today we are having a deep down on Bollinger Band. We'll definitely have one on Ichimoku Cloud, one on Moving Average, and depending on the interest that we get it from you guys, we'll, we may have it for Super Trend and Parabolic SAR as well. Right? A very very important indicators. Right? So uh, jumping into Bollinger Band, what is Bollinger Band? So Bollinger Band helps uh, is basically a volatility measure calculated by uh, plotting standard deviation along with a certain moving average, right? So where should you use Bollinger Band when you are looking more from the volatility perspective, right? And it uses one of the statistics concepts called standard deviation. Uh, need, uh, you may not need to know about it, but uh, it's always good to know that right? what, what are the important constituents which makes this uh, particular indicator uh, and why is it so popular, right? Created by Mr. John Bollinger. Uh, in 1983. Uh, the, again, the reason of mentioning this is uh, to tell you that it is time tested and is adopted and accepted by uh, major technical analysts all over the world, right? So it's a very, very important uh, uh, indicator, right? As far as technical analysis is concerned, right? <clears throat> Three constituents of uh, Bollinger Band. Number one, the upper band. So you'll see along with the price, there there will be two additional lines, right? Uh, one is a line which is above, so this is middle band, this is upper band and this is lower band, right? So let's take a quick example of how the Bollinger Band looks like, right? So Bollinger Band would uh, appear like, uh, let's close this one, MACD histogram, right? MACD, let's close this, we we'll get directly from the Bollinger Band, right? So when you click on uh, the uh, uh, Bollinger Band, I think I've taken the resolution too high for everybody's uh, basically uh, convenience, right? So it may be a little inconvenient for me if I have expanded the screen beyond the size, but uh, I hope that any of you who are using on a smaller resolution, uh, they'll be able to see it much more clear, right? So uh, this is how a typical Bollinger Band is. So you have, a, uh, so uh, let's see on the line chart first and then we jump into the candlestick, uh, which some of you have recommended to use throughout the training session, right? So this is the middle band. This is the upper band and this is the lower band, right? If you have a preference of any particular color, you can obviously change the uh, colors. So sometimes a darker color, uh, maybe something like a green or maybe something like a, uh, uh, a pink color would give you much clearer picture, right? So the choice is purely yours. The idea of this particular uh, uh, session of the session, right, is just to uh, mention you that there th it is made of three different lines, upper, middle and lower band, right? We'll go into details as we Proceed. Okay. So deep dive with Bollinger Band. Uh, what is upper band? Upper band is middle band, uh, middle band uh, plus n standard deviation, right? Where n can be any number. What is middle band? Middle band is a simple moving average, right? Simple moving average can be of any number. Uh, the the starting point is uh, or or the default value uh, as it's mentioned is twenty SMA on a close price, right? Uh, n standard deviation, the default n standard deviation is 2, right? So it is middle band plus 2 standard deviation, right? Uh, so uh, so these are, this is how the three bands are calculated and uh, don't need to know about this uh, as, as we have seen in the other sessions also. All these things are now readily available in any of the good charting or any of the good uh, uh, screening platform, right? Technical uh, screeners platform. Uh, another thing. Uh, which is not visible in the chart is called Bollinger Bandwidth. So Bollinger Bandwidth is upper band minus lower band divided by middle band, right? So uh, uh, we will also look at this uh, bandwidth uh, when when it is needed uh, during the course of the session, right? Uh, 
right? So default values are 20 SMA on close price and with two standard deviation. Okay. So uh, Bollinger Bands, a standard deviation concepts. Uh, so what happens, right? So whenever there is a volatility or if you remember or if you have uh, gone through any of the standard deviation uh, things, right? Uh, basically, purely in terms of statistics or the bell curve. Bell curve, some of you may be a little familiar because that's the term which is used in your corporate world, right? Uh, for giving you promotions or salary hike and so on and so forth, right? So, Bollinger Band uh, the, with two standard deviation, right? So, the probability, the probability of price to be within two standard deviation is 95%, right? And the probability of it being within three standard deviation is 99% of the case. And if it is one standard deviation, it is 68%, right? So if you see a typical bell curve, right? So bell curve, uh, we don't have an image of bell curve, but uh, it would appear like uh, it goes up, comes down and goes on the right, right? So, uh, so what it typically tells you, what it typically tells you is basically what is the probability, how much, what is the probability that it will be within a certain range. And this, this standard deviation is the basis of most of the mathematical calculation, right? That what is the uh, uh, chances of your success? So once the Bollinger Band is drawn, right? Then uh, the probability of price staying in that band, probability of uh, price staying within that band is 95%, right? So which can be used that, okay, if it is within the band, right? You'll feel a lot more comfortable. The banks are not generally very wide. Of course, it goes from a wide, narrowing to broader range, depending on the volatility. But the, the probability would be about 95%, right? So 95 is a pretty good number, uh, is a pretty good number. And that's, that's how a lot of traders trade. Or maybe they use uh, Bollinger as a secondary indicator to see that, you know, is it is it uh, basically beyond that level or not? Right. So these three numbers, I don't need to know, but any, any of you uh, who are looking at fine tuning the Bollinger Banks, uh, they, 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 they may want to remember these numbers that 95% of the time it's two. Right. So if you if we change, so it's not always an uh, integer, you can use a floating number or, or a basically a, uh, basically a decimal point. So uh, a lot of people prefer 1.5 uh, Bollinger Bank as their key value. Right. Feel free to change. Uh, and how do you change? Uh, we'll take it. Uh, uh, in the course of uh, this session, right? What is the use of Bollinger Band? Uh, Bollinger Band tells you the volatility. It tells you about the consolidation phase. It gives you support and resistance. Remember, 95% uh, of the time it is within two range. So those two ranges are support and resistance, right? Mm -hmm. So in this case, these will be dynamic support. So price is going up. So, so is the Bollinger Band, right? Bollinger Band, sometimes they'll be crisscross, they'll be some, some sometimes they'll be within the range, right? So th these levels, upper and lower band, will give you dynamic support and resistance, right? Breakout and breakdown, we'll see uh, uh, how do you use Bollinger Band for breakout and breakdown. So if you see pretty much everything that we have uh, seen so far, right? Bollinger Band is capable of giving you those things, uh, uh, those signals or those indicators at any time. Okay. All right. So uh, Bollinger Band and top stock research, like other indicators, we have, you can get Bollinger Band on a stock. You can get it on a pre-screen. The pre-screen would typically use 20 uh, SMA and two standard deviation. Uh, you have a DIY screener where you can customize Bollinger Band, the different numbers. Uh, you can find the squeeze. Squeeze is nothing but the consolidation, breakout, breakdown. Bollinger bandwidth, remember, uh, upper plus lower divided by middle band is uh, the bandwidth. And then Bollinger band along with another band, which is very similar to this, Keltner band. So let me show you what Keltner band is. So similar to Bollinger band, this another band, which is called Keltner band. So, right. So Keltner band is also a, 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 a band uh, with three lines, upper, middle and lower. Typically, uh, what uh, users or analysts use is upper and lower for Keltner middle band is of a lesser significance, right? Uh, similar to Bollinger Bank, there are other overlays. There's a MA envelope, right? Which you can look at, again, two kinds of bands, right? Or you can look at MA channel, moving average channel, or you can look at a uh, few, few other uh, different, uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, a different kind of bands which are available, right? So feel free to play with these things, right? Other, other overlays that we discussed, one was super trend, Right, super trend is generally plotted along with this. Right, so this is how the super trend is. Uh, there are other ones which will give you similar kind of signals or uh, support resistance breakout. Is parabolics are uh, so parabolics are is here, right? 
so will give you other signals right so uh, once you understand the concept of one particular band or one particular overlay then uh, you may want to use it for others one right uh, so that's the reason why it deviated a bit uh, of uh, taking it to show you some of the other uh, uh, bands or overlays also right so a bollinger band with keltner right uh, that's where we got into slightly deviated but i thought that it's useful for you to know that there are many more overlays uh, Bollinger band and charts, we have briefly seen that. We'll see that in more details as we move, right? Bollinger band and ba uh, watch list. Uh, if time permits, we'll show you watch list. Otherwise, we'll have a separate session on watch list also. Uh, you, uh, like any other indicator, you can add alert on Bollinger band, okay? Okay, so Bollinger band brief analysis, Bollinger band with print indicator, and Bollinger band with signal, right? So like what we have seen in RSI and MACD in the previous sessions, uh, for every indicator, we not only show the values, but we also show what the strength is. So in this particular case, uh, it is it says that it is strong bullish. And also there's a brief commentary out here, which says that it's a positive breakout, right? Positive breakout uh, with strong bullish means that it has crossed above this band. Uh, we'll try to understand what those uh, what it really means uh, in, in the trading world, right? Or in the trading analysis. Okay, so this is typically how you see it. Uh, let's take uh, opportunity to look at one of the stocks. Nobody has recommended, so I'll just take a uh, stock of uh, uh, maybe. Uh, Mayur, want to tell me a stock? Tata Power. Okay, let's go to Tata Power. Tata Power. So we see Bollinger Bands is in typical overlays, right? Uh, for Tata Power, it is it is neutral, right? So wh why is it neutral? And there's no analysis, it's neutral, right? So maybe it's not giving you a clear signal. So uh, basically, if you see, uh, it is somewhere, it, it, it has given a breakout, uh, then it has come back to the band. It's not giving a very clear signal. So it's somewhere between this. So just based on this particular value, uh, uh, analyst may not be able to make a lot of uh, idea about this, uh, uh, of uh, this indicator as far as startup power is concerned. Okay. So uh, that was uh, one thing, right? The second thing is uh, also we discussed uh, that you can customize these values. So uh, go into custom indicator, click on this one. So by default, it is 20 and two. Uh, I want to change it to let's say 25. So automatically these value will change. And also, so it, here the interpretation, it tells you that it's a close price is below middle band, right? So you change to 25, let's say, right? Uh, and say save, right? So it says that it's still below and all the value gets changed. So uh, if you are one of those pros, uh, who wants to know the values at a different uh, points, then this is the place where you should be looking at. Okay, so moving ahead in, in the direction of uh, uh, the Bollinger Band uh, presentation. Right, so Bollinger Band strategies, right? Now, uh, uh, we, we have tried to create some of the best strategies uh, available using Bollinger Band. So number one is Bollinger Band for with, uh, to use as a support and resistance. Uh, remember, 95% of the time, within two standard deviation, it will be within that range, right? And the, the extreme levels of Bollinger uh, will give you support and resistance, right? Number two, Bollinger Band crossover. So we'll see what those crossovers are, right? And how can you make a profitable trade out of it? Number three is breakout, right? Obviously, breakout and breakdown is uh, should uh, ring a lot of bells for anybody who wants to enter into a, 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 a basically a move, uh, at the earlier possible time, right? Then uh, we'll see how the Bollinger Band itself is trending, number one, how it is converging and how it is diverging, right? So uh, remember, don't confuse it with the moving average convergence and divergence, what we uh, saw yesterday. This is a uh, Bollinger Band, uh, uh, basically convergence and divergence, right? We'll see and understand that uh, in a short while. Bollinger Band squeeze, uh, what it means, uh, so basically, if you see convergence and squeeze are relatively similar or in fact, uh, pretty much similar, right? So what does it mean? Uh, how do you interpret this, right? Purely based on the volatility, based on the consolidation or trending market, these values uh, keep on changing and the chart also changes. Uh, potential bank squeeze breakout. So when the br uh, breakout has not yet happened, but there's a potential possibility of it breaking out or breaking down, right? So that's another strategy. So you you be uh, one of the earlier movers compared to uh, so a lot a lot of people complain that uh, uh, we get signals after the fact and a lot of movement is already 
uh, basically they cannot capitalize on a lot of movement, right? So a potential Bollinger Band uh, squeeze breakout breakdown will help you to uh, uh, be an early rider, right? Then Bollinger Band and Keltner Band. Uh, so how do we mix the two bands, right, together to uh, to get a good uh, uh, trading signal? Then Bollinger Band with some of the other indicators. Then similar to what we did for uh, RSI and MACD is what are the better numbers for day trading and swing trading, okay? Right. So using Bollinger Band and uh, and uh, for uh, support and resistance, uh, remember guys, 95% of the time uh, uh, using the standard formula of two standard deviation, uh, the price will be within the band, right? So let's see what those things are. Right. So one example, my team has got it for me is if you look at the sideways market or even at a slightly trending, not very aggressive market, it will remain within that particular level. Right. So what are the entry points and what are the exit points? Right. So entry points would be this. This is whenever it comes closer to this thing. Right. Over, over in this one, if you see, there's a small double bottom as well. Right. I mean, if you guys can spot double bottom, there's a sort of a very, very uh, basically uh, twisted double bottom not everybody will be able to spot but these are the levels where you you should uh, come and uh, uh, get into the stock right so use this as uh, support or resistance right or if you are already in a position then use these things for uh, support and resistance right uh, Bollinger band so the upper band is resistance the lower band needless to say is the support right and middle band will keep on moving right so it's not uh, so another thing to note here is uh, basically these bands are not static like trend line, trend lines are straight lines, right? Uh, the bands here are very, very much dynamic. They move almost uh, or they are pretty much responsive uh, with the price, right? With slight lag, uh, like any other uh, technical indicators, this also has a lag, but uh, it, it moves along with the price. So your uh, support and level, uh, resistance levels would be much more dynamic. Like in this case, right? Uh, in this case, uh, if you are looking for exiting the market right the band is also uh, band is also expanding and it's uh, trying to bounce or taking support from those levels once uh, that is successful once that is successful it has gone up right from from that level or when it, it has come down to this particular point it has bounced back right so uh, there are multiple times where you'll see that uh, it's giving a very good quality support and resistance right so the so the the next one is uh, bollinger band crossover uh, Bollinger band crossover. So when the price crosses above middle band or or the price crosses below middle band, right? So we'll see a quick example of that. So what is middle band? If you guys remember from the earlier session, middle band is a simple moving average, right? So you can use middle band as a simple moving average also, right? So if, if 20 days simple moving average is one of your key strategies, right? Then you, you don't have to go and add a moving average from here. Right? You can just use this one as a moving average and moving average itself gives you very good support and resistance, right? Now, once this, if you see the price was pretty much stagnant around this, right? And then uh, once that level has crossed, then it has again given support at two different points, right? Before breaking it down. So when the price goes above middle band, uh, it is actually a simple moving average crossover, right? Which itself is an indicator, right? So consider this as an indicator of indicator. Right. So price price crossing above middle band uh, should be a good a good uh, sign. Right. Of uh, if you are already in a position, it should give you better confidence that price is crossing above the middle band. It should give you better confidence that things are going in the right direction. Okay. Uh, price cross below middle band is the same thing. Uh, we have cited an example. It has crossed above middle band. It has given a move. Go below middle band. It is again a given given a, a downtrend move. Right. So first is the extreme levels, upper and uh, lower. Number two is the middle band, right? The, the, where the crossover can give you certain signals, right? In this case, if you see, uh, in this case, it is going above. That means there's a trend and it is crossing above the middle band, right? There's a consistent upper, higher, high, higher, low with good volume participation. So the middle band crossover, uh, like an SMA would give you a good signal. And same thing is like it is trending down and has crossed below, right? So it will give you, uh, it, it might give you a good signal. Uh, breakout strategies, right? So th this is where most of the technical uh, uh, analyst guys, right? So the eyes opens or uh, gets brighter, right? When they see the breakout and breakdown. So we'll try to explain here, uh, Bollinger Band breakout and breakdown strategies. Price crossing above Bollinger Band and price crossing below Bollinger Band. So 
uh, guys remember uh, 95% of the time uh, pure, based on the pure theoretical standard deviation right it can be anything uh, i mean it, standard deviation to standard deviation is a pretty universal for, for universal thing right if it breaks out right that means it is it is within those 5% case uh, again different stocks may behave differently whenever those things happen right but whenever the breakout happens right whenever the breakout happens it tends to move in that direction right uh, remember uh, on the uh, sunday session we we covered a support and resistance using trend line those similar breakouts are here right so here in this particular case breakout has happened when the price crosses above the upper band that is where it is breakout and then uh, you you can expect a decent move right uh, you can expect a decent move and similarly when it goes uh, below the bollinger band uh, you can expect a a down move so in this example you have both upward a break a breakout as well as breakdown right so two things coming together and again there there could be a certain false breakout also right so uh, remember nothing is absolute in in any world right especially when it comes to uh, stock analysis uh, so there is always a level of probability with which a certain indicator works uh, a 60% probability is considered to be extremely good right i'm reemphasizing that if there are certain trades you are continuously making false decision doesn't mean that uh, your strategy is wrong uh, you may fall in that uh, basically uh, 30 40 50% failure but the success is where uh, you need to ride on okay so these are breakout and breakdown uh, we have screeners for these things so let's take us a, uh, a moment to see where the screeners are for these thing uh, going back here uh, go to technical screeners uh go to indicators the first one is bollinger band so if the price is above bollinger band right uh the, the chart that we are looking at is uh, daily eod chart right so there's one stock which is jsw steel right so when you look at this one right so it has it is clearly above the bollinger band right so this is where uh, so a breakout has happened with minor retracement right and it still it has again given a breakout here right so that can be seen as a Uh, a good bullish move and you see that there's a uh, there's a healthy price movement so looking at the candles charts you'll see that there are three green candles right or rather four green candles uh, out here right so that should give you a, a good one similarly there was a breakout here right after the breakout it has given a pretty decent move right so what should your stop loss be your stop loss should be the middle band right if it close if you are on a eod then the close price should be uh, close price should be uh, below the middle band that should act as a stop loss for you right uh, and if you have an other mechanism or proven mechanism you can use the other stop loss but for very simplistic purpose the middle band should act as a good stop loss if you are on a eod then uh, you need to wait and this is the point where it has given a bre uh, breakdown right and then uh, you would have uh, avoided certain loss and then the, again the entry point is over here and uh, you can uh, go and look at other things uh, taking it to a slightly broader uh, market to see where these things are so one is bajaj electrical where the breakout has happened right trying to look in the candlestick charts right so breakout has happened here it has given upward moves without uh, touching the stop loss again it has given right so two consecutive if there are two or three consecutive uh, breakouts right that's even good so in this case we see three breakouts one two and three right so similarly there was a breakdown it has gone down right and then this is the place where uh, it has tried to cross there there's certain Uh, area of uncertainty out here right as uh, there certain area of uncertainty and then it has again given a trend so uh, just look at these things right we're picking things purely uh, very very random uh, without any creating a theoretical script right theoretical scripts lot of a uh, lot of uh, training institutes will take you to theoretical uh, scripts where they'll explain you the concepts right but we are taking real world example right there was an example which somebody wanted a lemon tree let's see how uh, uh bollinger band reacts to lemon tree right so uh, basically if you see there was a breakdown it has given a pretty uh, good move downwards right uh, there was a upward movement a small money was to be made here but normally you expect a better one right uh, th than this so this is how your lemon tree is behaving as far as uh, bollinger band is concerned right so over here breakout a very good move right so not every move will give you very good results idea is to ride on the wave and cut the stop loss or cut the losses right again here there was very good move right and then uh, it has given a, a, a good tick so if you see from the level of 70 it has gone all the way up to 77 right almost like a 10% move it has given out here okay so 
yeah, we'll take Titan in the next one, right? So, uh, guys, you understood. Uh, so, one of the screener that we have seen here is uh, above Bollinger Band. The second one, which we discussed, is above Central Line. So, you can go and look at it, and then narrowing will cover that in a short while. Uh, uh, you want to uh, give a little more, uh, um, uh, basically, spice to this particular setting rather than standard settings. Go to uh, DIY screeners, custom screener. Go to DIY. Uh, go to technical indicators. In the overlays, you'll see there are two. Uh, since this is so powerful and so important, right? What we have done is uh, we have uh, uh, we, we have uh, uh, added two different uh, Bollinger Band strategies. One is simple price send. Bollinger and another is Bollinger Band squeeze. So we'll see that uh, what that uh, what these two things are, right? So currently our focus is on price and Bollinger Band. So here the options are you can work on any of the pr price, close, open, high, low, close, and all the other combinations. Uh, looking at stocks which are above Bollinger Band, right? So above Bollinger Band or uh, maybe crossing above Bollinger Band, right? If you, that is something with uh, which is important. So look look at price which is above Bollinger Band. On uh, on uh, NSE 500, we'll see some stocks, right? So these are nine stocks, pretty much same set of stocks that we see uh, that we saw before. Uh, so you see that there's a breakout here, right? S some some sort of good volume indication, right? Uh, so uh, you can look at uh, something interesting out here, uh, taking it to a candlestick chart. Uh, when, when you look at this, right, so th th uh, this time there was a breakout. So you'll see that breakout and breakdown happens quite often, right? There's a breakdown here, right? So there was a downward movement, breakout. Let's hope that there's an upward movement out here, right? So uh, uh, that, that's how you'll typically use custom screener uh, uh, for a Bollinger Band settings, right? Somebody mentioned Titan. Uh, Titan, you'll see it's the same thing, right? So uh, Titan looks like a pretty volatile. So whenever there's there's a strong price movements, this looks like pretty much in the sideways market, right? From this phase, so the Bollinger Band has expanded, right? So unless it gives a very clear signal that this is what is happening, right? So it's trying to give support from this level at multiple levels, right? Similarly, it's giving support, and similarly, it's giving resistance from this level, right? A small candle may not give you that good a signal, especially with much lower volume. Uh, don't uh, get trapped into certain. Uh, positions just looking at one indicator look at the other combination a very very small candle of course it was with a gap up so gap up is a good thing right but the volume is not that good generally with gap up you'll have uh, if it is with good volume uh, it, it's a very powerful signal right so uh, not giving too good a signal because it's pr pretty much into uh, the uh, no man's territory so you'll uh, in such case you use Bollinger Bank for your support and resistance okay so uh, going uh, going uh, ahead with uh, some of those other settings that you can see in price and Bollinger. So you see price above below. Let's see if there's a, a stock which has crossed above Bollinger Band. Uh, so when when you run the screener, right? So there are few stocks. Uh, for example, Jindal Power, right? So J the Jindal twins are doing good. Power and Steel. Maybe some good news is coming from that front, right? So again, there's a lot of movement. We saw JSW. Uh, uh, steel. Now this is general power is also uh, breaking. So if you see, it is breaking. Uh, it is breaking above that at a higher level, right? Uh, than any of the recent levels. So this should be even more uh, more bullish uh, signal, right? When such a thing happens at a higher level, this is uh, this is far more bullish signal, right? Right. So uh, ba basically, uh, what we saw is a uh, uh, the custom screener where you can have these many settings, right? Cross above, cross below. All these settings are there. Okay. Similarly, there are more settings where you can change the standard deviation from one two to one point five. Uh, other things that you can do is uh, typically it can be drawn on SMA. Uh, similarly, you can use on EMA or uh, WMA. Uh, soon we'll add more MAs, right? But uh, typically uh, it works very well with simple moving average. You can change the period. Uh, you can change the standard deviation, and there are other settings that you can explore. If you particularly have any questions, then uh, do raise it. Uh, to us uh, on the usage of this uh, DIY screeners, uh, which uh, me or one of my uh, colleagues will be able to explain you, right? I see a hand uh, being raised. Quara? Hello, sir. Yes, sir. So while screening with Bollinger Bands? Yes. Yeah. Can we add the volume? Oh, sir, certainly, certainly. 
like so, so, last 20 days average is more than today's volume is more than last 20 days average like that certainly certainly so so what we do is we we take a simple one right on nsc 500 uh, because that's likely to give better results right uh it, it it's good quality stocks right nsc 500 right and then so this is our basic filter which gives us about nine stocks then you're looking at moving average right so uh you are looking at uh volume move, uh you're looking at uh bollinger uh, bands with volume yeah which volume no like uh, suppose bollinger band is breaking out today mm -hmm. so today volume is last 20 days average so volume is more or not like is it the breakout breakout is with volume or not okay okay so so th th there are two ways of looking at it right uh compare we have that option out here just give me one second right so you go click volume over here right ma again on volume okay and then uh, the the price so ignore the world price so once you have selected volume right so it is volume right mm -hmm. so above 20 okay, 20 day moving average uh, so above or cross above cross above is something what you are what you are looking at right yes, so yes. when you look at this right so you do find two stocks where uh, the price has gone above the bollinger band right and you see the volume this this blue line uh, uh, you see the blue line this blue line is 20 day moving average right yes yes this right. can be considered as a good breakout uh, uh so yes it, it is a it, it is a good breakout yes yes right or rather what what i'll i'll tell you is basically you can also use so this is average right moving average what you can also do is you can use as a trending volume so basically volume trending for let's say for last three days that might also give you good results right so very similar results so volume is continuously trending up and there are more variations so uh, use use these uh, use these uh, buttons right uh, to compare price with uh, or anything with volume let me close this one right latest volume above uh, above previous uh, screener tick right which screener tick here is this by let's say 100% right so today's volume should be double than the previous volume that's when you look at it again the so you see a new record coming here right max health so this would be even better than the previous one because the volume is almost double than the previous volume, right? Almost volume is double than the previous volume, right? Or you can put any number. So I have, what I have said is uh, 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 in the screener, what I've said is greater than uh, by 100%, right? You can put any other number. So either you can use by moving average, volume moving average, or you can go for trending volume, or you can go with the volume comparison. And you can compare these volumes, right? Uh, for last many numbers so it's not that only one you add another one compared to the previous volume compared to previous minus two volume right so on and so forth you can continue to do that but you are right if it is a uh, volume confirmation it, it's likely to give you better results thank you thank you so much yeah yeah great uh i see few comments uh all is nse all and uh NSE 500 is 500. So, so basically, uh, if you had attended the first session, right, uh, on 24th, uh, that's where we explained some of the index, right? So, what is NSE 500 and other things? I think it will be beyond the scope of this discussion to explain the difference between NSE 500 and uh, NSE all, right? So, uh, that that we can get it uh, that we can get it uh, 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 through one of the direct one-on-one -on -one correspondence, okay? Uh, right. So price uh, close below Bollinger Band, and we have, we have seen a uh, basic stuff, right? How to use uh, a Bollinger Band DIY screener, right? Uh, of uh, you can customize with it. It gives you a lot of level of customizability. You can do it on upper band, lower band, middle band, and then we have another one which we'll see that in a short while, right? Bollinger Band squeeze. We have given a lot of weightage to Bollinger Band because it's one of the most uh, uh, powerful uh, tool available in the technical world. Okay. So, okay, so uh, Bollinger Band trending, convergence and di divergence, right? So, uh, uh, guys, if you see, if you see that the Bollinger Band, right, uh, let's take example of any, any band, right? So, what happens is the bands itself will show you multiple things, right? Number one is from this volatility level, right? It is converging, right? Uh, Want to give me any stock uh, name like what you have given before? 
maybe I have to scroll a little bit up. Let me see. Let me see if uh, able to Titan we have seen lemon tree. Lemon tree also I think we have seen right. Bata. Bata. Let's see what what that particular thing is. So first of all, uh, if you see the band uh, from a high volatility, let's see a better one. Okay. So here the price is trending up, right? So is the Bollinger Band trending, right? The pri price is trending, so is Bollinger Band, unless there's a huge movement, right? So, so basically this is Bollinger Band trending. You, you can look, we'll try to add a lot more filters in the system of uh, band itself trending up or trending down uh, to give you confirmation of your price movements, right? A trending up and price is within the range and price is giving multiple breakouts, right? So that's another exercise that we will take uh, in coming days where it will tell you that uh, the uh, the Bollinger Band is trending up and it has not given any kind of uh, uh, basically uh, breakdown below the middle band and how many times it has breached it, right? So the more number of times it has breached, the stronger the upward movement is and that will be a good place to get into the stock, right? So, so like in this particular case, it, it, it was breaching. So there was clearly smart money coming in, coming in, coming in, right? So remember the session of smart money and weak money, smart money is coming it moved up with good volume right over here then uh, the smart money is exiting uh, fear of missing out or FOMO is coming here the weak money is coming it's trying to take it out uh, with lower volume couldn't sustain and it has come down right so same thing happens whether you are looking at uh, uh, one indicator or other you'll find the similar patterns everywhere okay so uh, this is where the Bollinger Band is trending so let me uh, zoom again right so what happens is uh, uh, in this particular case, the Bollinger Band is narrowing because the volatility, volatility is low, right? So you'll see there's a lot of convergence. Uh, this is not MACD, Moving Average Convergence Divergence. This is uh, Bollinger Band Convergence, where the two lines are getting converged uh, or getting narrower, right? And then when you see volatility increasing, again, the band is expanding. So in coming days, uh, we'll add two more uh, filters in the system, right? Uh, for, for you to screen these two things. One is the band trending up how many times it is giving you breakout in that thing to give you double or triple confirmation. Number two is where the band is uh, uh, widening, right? We do have uh, the most important thing which uh, uh, which analysts look for is where the band is narrowing. We have a filter for that, right? So going back to the slide, uh, what are the three stage? Uh, one is uh, the trending upper and lower band. Both are trending in the same direction. Uh, obviously, this goes along with the price, right? Uh, when both goes with the price and with, with uh, medium level of volatility, both will go up together. Right? When the volatility increase, uh, then there will be a lot of divergence. The two, uh, two lines will be uh, going against each other. And when the volatility is extremely low, right? you will see that both the banks are moving towards the same direction. Uh, let's see an example or two. In this case, if you see, uh, uh, there is a band continuously moving up. There is a strong uptrend very very strong uptrend multiple times the Bollinger Band upper band is uh, is getting breached right so this is the kind of filter that we'll be creating in a short time uh, I mean maybe in next few releases right we'll try to get that uh, if it if we don't do it you guys can always come and remind me that uh, why STS are not adding this band is it's, we think that is important okay so uh, it, this is the phase where the band is itself is uh, going up right when the band itself is going up then uh, 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 basically, basically uh, you can either increase uh, the standard deviation or decrease the standard deviation and very less likely to touch this bottom line, right? So uh, this is the phase where the band itself is trending up. Uh, then the next one is ba basically where the uh, band is converging and diverging, right? So converging is the phase where the movement of stock is not much, right? When the stock is not moving much, right? Or when there is low volatility, any uh, uh, when there is low volatility, uh, then uh, there, there's a very good chance of a very strong breakout or breakdown in whichever direction it goes and a stock is likely to make a very good uh, move, right? So you see this particular phase, you see this particular phase where it was in a very narrow range and this is where you have to keep a very strict uh, basically vigil around it to see where it is breaking, right? So these kind of stocks should be in your watch list, uh, add alert on top of it or add alert at bottom of it, right, to see the movement. Breakout has happened with extremely good volume, right? Breakout has happened with extremely good volume out here, right? So there was a false breakout here, right? Uh, but the second breakout which has given was ex extremely good volume. 
uh, I think uh, you should consider uh, getting into stocks in this kind of situation, right? So band is converging uh, is an opportunity. Band is converging. It's an opportunity for you to uh, wait for the right breakout or breakdown. And when the band is a div uh, when the, there's a lot of divergence between the two, right? That means there's a lot of volatility, right? When there's a lot of volatility, it is not for, uh, you know, weak heart. It is generally for much more uh, stronger people, right? Because the, the price would, uh, price can go up, down pretty aggressively, right? So that's where the stop loss and other things comes into picture. Uh, th th this, this is where you'll see the convergence and divergence using Bollinger Band, right? Uh, then the next one is squeeze, right? The squeeze is basically the convergence. This is this is typically what is called squeeze. And squeeze, as I mentioned, is a consolidation phase. And after consolidation, you'll see a uh, or you're likely to get a spectacular move, right? Which we'll see uh, in a short while. Okay, I, I see somebody raising hand. Is Rahul? Yeah, Rahul, please go ahead. Uh, 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 sorry, sorry. sorry. Uh, actually, I, uh, something went wrong. Um, mm -hmm. I'm audible. Yes, absolutely. Okay, sir. So thank you. Uh, sir, there is a small observation which I had seen earlier also. We were talking about the breakout of the upper band or the lower band. Price mm -hmm. breakout mm -hmm. in Bollinger Band. Mm -hmm. so, as you mentioned uh, uh, in your conversations, then when the price breaks out of the Bollinger Band on either side, mm -hmm. if it is uh, breaking on the upper side, uh, in generally, it there's a, good rally, there's a good rally in that case. That's right. And if it breaks... Mm -hmm. From the Bollinger Band, is a good fall. The, the the fall is good, but sir, mm -hmm. we have observed once it crosses the either side, of, uh, generally it uh, pinches back to the other side of the band. Sir, how do we uh, how do we make out that if it's going to make a rally or uh, like we have to observe that the price is following the trend or uh, it's reversing the trend? Am okay. I my is the question clear? Absolutely. See, see, basically in this case, right? See the best case of. So, so depending on your uh, this thing, right? Risk profile, right? The best case scenario. The best case scenario is what? The best case scenario is when it is narrow range, you go. There's a breakout, right? Put a stop loss somewhere in between, or maybe a little low. If the band itself is very very narrow, right? You can put it as a lower band also, right? This level also you can put it. This is this is more for uh, more conservative traders. The aggressive traders can get into a, a second stage also, right? So basically, uh, for example, it has given a breakout here, right? If you are still aggressive and you have missed the bus, you can still enter at this level. Okay. Now, depending on your risk profile, right? So if you had uh, gone into this level, right? So this is where there was a good rally moving upwards, right? Now, also, if you see some of the other patterns, right? Which is you see that there's a possibility of breakdown. There are big, big candles. Now, it has gone into no man territory in this particular case, right? A typical sideways market. Right. If that is the case, then what you should be doing is this line perhaps would have, would be a good line for a uh, stop loss. See, not necessary. So textbook style, it is middle band, right? But with some experience. Now it is going again into sort of a consolidation or a no man's territory, right? So in such case, in such case, there there are various other theories which we'll try to cover in price action section. Is how to use stop loss based on last five or ten candles, right? Uh, there, 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 there's a mathematician or a technical analyst, right, called uh, Mr. DeMarc, right. Uh, if you get an opportunity, just read a little bit about it. So basically, uh, he also explains a lot of things about price action and using stop losses and other things, right. Uh, and there are a lot of other analysts also. So in this case, once it goes into uh, uh, this thing, right, uh, a territory which is uh, not very, very clear, right, then you use one of these levels, right, as stop loss because uh, once it goes into uh, this territory, right, it can go up or can go down. So if it goes down, then uh, uh, basically all your profits gets wiped out, right? You'll get very less profit. You'll get profit, but the profit will be very, very less, right? Profit will be very, very less. So look look at other other signals, right, for uh, for stop loss. So candlestick patterns, as some of you have uh, recommended, right, uh, is uh, basically uh, 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 basically gives you better insight, right? So any questions which is marked in pure capital uh, will be ignored. Uh, sorry for uh, that case because it, it's it's generally considered as rude. So uh, my apologies that if I'm, I'm not taking any questions which are purely in uh, capitals, okay? Uh, that we have discussed and mentioned in the previous sessions also. Uh, so this is how you would use it, sir. Uh, does it answer your question? Oh. Yeah, does it answer your question, sir? 
yeah yeah it, sir it answers my question but i have a small request uh-huh. uh, sir uh, uh-huh. a problem which i am facing and i suppose many of the my followers will be follow uh, facing uh-huh. sir we are not able to uh, absorb the movement of the price something went wrong when we are following the price what will be the reason sir if you sir. can have a sp- separate session on it to explain how to understand the price and how to counter it Okay, sure. In price so action, it's not related to indicator. So it's sure, not related sure. to indicator, but see, it will see. help us a lot. Yeah, yeah. Fifteenth of uh, January, right, is where we have allocated for price action, right. So I recommend you to get, uh, uh, if possible, it's a Saturday, right. Uh, so if possible, try to attend that. So we, we'll uh, we'll try to get as many examples as possible. Right? It's going to be an interesting session, right? If we can cover in a day, well and good. Otherwise, we'll have another session on price action, right? It's a very very vast topic. and not very easy to understand also okay so request to have it after 6:30 pm hmm uh, only on so, no, no, uh, so so next of the sessions will only be on weekends right uh, so the so timing after 6:30 pm i have a working so uh, got it that we'll, we'll see if, if uh, we'll see how it goes but uh, we also have to look at the comfort of our uh, team also right hello yeah okay hello. Thank, you, sir. thank you hello yes sir hello yes sir we can hear you Ah, you can. Ah, uh, today I am having a network problem. Acha, you hear me? Acha, I have one uh, question regarding this Bollinger Band. Which uh, time frame do you, uh, do you suggest uh, in the intraday levels? We'll come to that, right? So, like what we do for the other other indicators, right? We have a section uh, in coming slides uh, where we will uh, will see that uh, uh, what time frame should suit you for uh, more aggressive. Obviously, twenty MA. Uh, would be not the best thing for intraday, right? So you have to have a smaller p- time period. We'll we'll get to that, or maybe a smaller standard deviation. We'll come to that, sir. Uh, which you, YouTube videos to understand? Okay, okay. Uh, so on on the sessions, right? We, we, you you can you can uh, call us to see where it works well. Uh, maybe we can have uh, some sort of a polling uh, where uh, we we can work. Right uh, on what times really suits right, but consider these as a purely complementary sessions. Right, we are just a, a general awareness regarding these indicators. Is what we are, uh, what is the attempt of this uh, particular series of sessions? Okay, uh, Bollinger Band squeeze. Right, so the next thing what what we were discussing here is basically the convergence. Right, so the similar to the convergence uh, or basically more in the Bollinger Band world, it's called Bollinger Band squeeze. Uh, and then w- once the squeeze happens then what what should you do right once the squeeze has happened what should you be doing uh, uh, after after that uh, uh, thing right and then bollinger band squeeze potential breakout and breakdown right so once the price goes into a consolidation phase right uh, the example which has come here right so it's in a very very narrow range as we see that uh, this is uh, this is a uh, indicator of volatility when the volatility volatility is low uh, the band squeeze down right and when volatility is high it goes up right so the opportunity that you get the opportunity that you get or the best opportunity you get is once the the squeeze is broken out right so in this example what uh, what's being highlighted out here is basically this signal is already there right so if you are purely into price uh, volume you'll see that uh, it, it has gone above the middle band and then there's a stellar move out there right so which which is continuously giving you a very good move so what you should be looking at what you should be looking at is squeeze right keep observing uh, put proper stop losses or alerts around that once the breakout has happened then you you, you can get into the stock and it it is likely to give you very good move similarly there was another another squeeze out here right it was in a very narrow range and then it has given out a breakout here in this case it has given a gap up also right so there are multiple things which are also uh, basically uh, coming along with that so one of the key things if you are more of a conservative player right more of a conservative player looking for a bigger uh, bigger moves uh, then uh, you should be looking at bollinger band squeeze uh, and once the breakout or breakdown happens right you can get in or out uh, the move that you are likely to get is much better compared to a lot of other indicators okay okay so let's let's see uh, where do we uh, get screener for bollinger band uh, again going from a very simple one uh, because uh, the the other one is uh, diy's can be a little complex or overwhelming for some of you right so bollinger band uh, look at uh, narrowing band right uh, narrowing band uh, so there are two stocks as we speak there are two stocks in blue chip and maybe in nse 500 there are seven stocks which 
are in that particular zone right which are squeezing and these are squeezing for 30 periods right so which is a very good number the longer the squeeze the better it is okay so let's look at the chart right so after all those uh, uh, basically violent moves right it is finally going into a squeezing mode right or oh, very very narrow range so this is the time where you should be looking at whether uh, 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 what kind of moves you are looking for right you again look from a very narrow it's going into very uh, uh, from a very wide range it's going back into very very narrow range right c right so uh, uh, the bollinger band so from from all these upward moves right so move has happened here so first breakout has happened here with good volume it has gone up and then there's a consolidation right so again this is a waiting time where you should be looking for either breakout or breakdown okay so th there are many examples of that of this squeeze right very very simple squeeze if you are uh, once you understand the squeeze uh, the, the, the default one uh, what you can do is you can go again into diy screeners do it yourself uh, go into technical indicators go to bollinger band squeeze not the price and bollinger just the squeeze right so you'll find that there are a lot of different squeeze available here right so if if you go and look at it they are low bandwidth uh, so low range low bandwidth uh, so somebody mentioned about bandwidth right we'll cover bandwidth when we cover that particular point so this is low bandwidth range is what we are trying to cover here right so there are certain settings uh, these settings requires little bit of practice but once you practice it uh, i think you'll be uh, able to get very good quality stocks uh, in these things right so looking at stocks which are giving bollinger band squeeze based on these particular settings uh, which is 12 15 and 20 uh, so play with these things again and again you'll find that something which really works well for you uh, by default it is 12 15 and 20 right so when you look at these so it, it is trying to find a squeeze for you over here right so this is one squeeze uh, see uh, uh, see there's a squeeze out here breakout and it has given a pretty good move okay the second one is delivery right from all the volatility and other things right all the bad news and everything so after squeeze there's a downward movement and then uh, again there's a squeeze so there's again a consolidation move right there, there's a uh, again a consolidation move so uh, keep observing such things right these, these are very very powerful ones right very very powerful so this is even a better squeeze right compared to all the squeeze that we have seen this is even a better squeeze so play with these numbers play with these numbers right so it, it so this this is something which is uh, not a mathematical formula this is something which we created so you use them uh, play with this uh, you can also become a, a, a particular uh, your own um, basically analyst by playing with these numbers right uh, uh, we try to keep uh, the uh, uh, descriptions as intuitive as possible but there's nothing very intuitive uh, uh, because of the real estate that we have right we have a very small space we can't explain a lot of things out here right but we'll definitely try to add uh, more and more a uh, kind of uh, help guide for you to look at these things right as we move on okay so this is one squeeze which you can see right uh, then uh, you may you are you will not really be interested in squeeze right you'll be interested in breakout so squeeze is for you to look at the stock or start observing breakout is what you'll be looking so let's see if there are any stocks which has given a breakout so basf has given a breakout i think somebody also mentioned basf okay so uh, let's look at this one right so after a very good narrow uh, squeeze right uh, it has given a breakout so somebody mentioned about volume ma so let's look at uh, sma of uh, maybe 20 with volume right so you see that uh, so it's clearly way above the volume for last some time right so this is where if you see uh, th there's huge volume contains volume that means smart money is coming in without making the price uh, change a lot right so these are certain things which are preceding your real price action right so consider these things whenever you see that it's in consolidation volume is increasing that means somebody is really looking to accumulate very very slowly without affecting the price right so that they are ultimate beneficiary of these uh, these moves right smart money is coming in right smart money coming in i'm not sure it will really reflect into a huge breakout but uh, it's likely that it's going to go up right jsw steel right it has given a breakout after the squeeze right uh, this is another stock what stock is it uh, max healthcare after a narrow range it has given a breakout all right so uh, basically this is how you'll be looking at squeeze okay uh, 
then uh, uh, there, there, there are quite a few different kind of squeeze. Uh, one of them is the lowest bandwidth, right? So this is a strategy which a lot of uh, analysts also use, wh where the bandwidth is lowest in last, uh, uh, basically, uh, let's keep it as an optional, where the bandwidth is uh, lowest. So let's look at these stocks, where the bandwidth is really lowest. Uh, so we find 13 stocks, right? Uh, looking at candlestick, somebody's helping me, uh, reminding me back again. So the bandwidth here, right? The bandwidth here is lowest in last 100 days. Right? So if you look at things, uh, the bandwidth is lowest. When the bandwidth is lowest in last 50, 100 days, right? That is where uh, there's a good chance of a breakout is here or a breakdown is here, right? Over here, uh, not sure if it was the lowest level, but when you look at it. So, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Means a breakout will happen or the breakdown will happen? Uh, yes, th th that's the possibility, right? Uh, Ma'am, your question, uh, basically, if it is narrowing band, right, if it is narrowing band, that means it is in the zone of uncertainty, right? If it is, it is in a zone of uncertainty, and the more the narrower branch, uh, band, right, uh, 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 the higher the breakout or the more violent breakout or breakdown happens. Uh, there are certain chart patterns, which is uh, called narrow range patterns, NR4, NR7, which we saw very, very briefly in one of the training sessions. Uh, that does nothing but, but to find where it is narrowest, right? Once it goes narrow, it cannot go further narrow, right? Some movement has to happen. Either bears have to jump in or bulls have to jump in, right? So if such is the case, if such is the case, right? The, uh, whoever takes charge, you guys remember we had a very, very uh, basically uh, animatic diagram, right? Uh, 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 not animatic, <laughs> a diagram with a lot of animation wherein we had the bull, bear, uh, once a, a level is broken, right? Once either bull or bear take control, right? They tend to move much faster in the uh, in the direction of the move, right? Similar thing is what it is trying to find, right? Uh, the next one is astral, right? Again, it is the narrowest band, right? So it may not look like a pure squeeze, but this is something which a lot of uh, analysts look. And on top of it, right? <laughs> Just see this. There are three dojis. There are three dojis that adds lot more uncertainty, right? So dojis are an excellent, so it looks like a useless thing, doji, but they are basically, they tell you a lot of things that something or uh, basically they are, uh, they are signals before uh, actual uh, breakout or breakdown, right? So these are no man's signal. So first of all, it's low bandwidth. Again, it is no man's signal, right? So whichever direction it goes, it's likely to go much higher. I see uh, Glaxo. So let me, let me try to get Glaxo, uh, one of Claxo Smith line, right? So you see it's, it's, it's very, very narrow, right? It's extremely narrow, right? So again, you see that because it was in a very narrow range, it was in a very narrow range, uh, uh, th there's a good possibility. It, first of all, it was narrow, it got narrow, it got further narrow, and now it is even smaller, right? So it has to, somebody will have to take a call, right? Of going up or down. So there's a lot of demand, a lot of supply within this zone. Whichever direction it goes, is likely to go in that particular direction. I hope that uh, that helps, sir. Uh, Rakesh, sir. Okay. Okay. So I proceed to the next one. Okay, Rahul, sir. Yeah, sir. Farak Sawal, आपके आगे के लिए आपने इससे पीछे वाला जो चार्ट लिया था. हम्म. Please एक बार लेंगे. हम्म. Sir, ये आगे के लिए है क्योंकि Bollinger Band का part नहीं है. एक बड़ी confusion हमको ये भी रहती है. सर जैसे यहाँ पे तीन व्हाइट सोल्जर्स का फॉर्मेशन हुआ विद हाई वॉल्यूम उसके बाद पूरी प्राइस ब्रेक कर गई है यहाँ से डाउन साइड पे आ गया हालांकि वहाँ पे इवनिंग स्टार बना है आज के बाद सर आप जब कैंडल्स लेंगे तो सर ये कुछ एस्पेक्ट्स को क्लियर कीजिएगा सर इसमें बड़ी सर एक्चुअली इन चीजों में बड़ी प्रॉब्लम आ रही है थ्री व्हाइट सोल्जर्स में ब्रेक डाउन हो रहा है वॉल्यूम हाई है फिर क्या हुआ Right. Yes, क्या क्या you. हुआ इट्स इट्स अ वेरी गुड थिंग एंड इट्स समथिंग व्हिच डज हैपन इन द मार्केट राइट सो बेसिकली अगर आपने यहां मूव लिया राइट ऑब्वियसली लॉट ऑफ पीपल हु आर सो दिस दिस लुक्स लाइक अ प्रीटी गुड बुलिश सिग्नल राइट बट आपको यहां पे पॉइंट्स yes. दिखना स्टार्ट हो गया राइट right? पॉइंट्स दिखना स्टार्ट हो गया यहां पे ओपन हुआ स्ट्रेंथ ज्यादा नहीं थी बहुत ही छोटा नियर डोजी near doji or spinning top kind of banana right and this pattern itself is a very good pattern if it closes below this level right to ye negate ho gaya wala cheez kya hua is particular stock mein ye kaun sa tha alembic pharma right kya hua uh, i may not know 
क्विक न्यूज आई थी या फिर कुछ मेजर सप्लाई आई होगी इस जोन में किसी ने प्रॉफिट बुकिंग की होगी प्रॉफिट बुकिंग लग से रोहित और राहुल करेंगे तो कुछ इम्पैक्ट नहीं आएगा राइट बट प्रॉफिट बुकिंग लग से एल करती है या वन ऑफ द एफ करते हैं राइट ऑब्वियसली देन दिस नो स्टॉपिंग राइट सो क्या हो सकता है आई डोंट नो वेदर इट्स अ न्यूज और समबडी डिड अ मैसिव चेंज इन द पोर्टफोलियो और डिड द प्रॉफिट बुकिंग वॉट एवर डिड डिड राइट वी वी सिंपली और आई वोट नो और आई डोंट नो रेदर राइट बिकॉज थोड़ा रिसर्च करेंगे तो शायद मिल जाएगा ये चीज राइट बट ये होता है तो आपको सिग्नल मिला था कि आपके जो लॉसेज हैं उसको लिमिट कर सकते थे आप राइट right? आपने खुद ही पॉइंट आउट कर दिया सर राइट right? आपको पता है चीज काफी yeah. ज्ञान है आपको इस चीज का राइट right? आपको समझ में आ गया था कि यहाँ पे गड़बड़ हो रहा है राइट right? सो so, ऐसे yeah. समय में बेस्ट इज टू गेट इन टू स्टॉप लॉस क्या उसके पीछे चल रहा है इफ यू ट्राई टू गो देयर देन इट्स नॉट अ टिपिकल टेक्निकल एनालिस्ट राइट देन इज मोर ऑफ न्यूज बेस्ड एंड समथिंग टेक्निकल एनालिसिस आपको थोड़ा सा हिंट देती है हमेशा देती है द आंसर इज नो बट अधिकतर समय देती है कुछ ना कुछ बेसिक हिंट देती है आपको ठीक है सर ठीक थैंक यू ओके समबडी मेंशन हैमर राइट राइट सर इट्स इट्स नियर हैमर राइट सो हैमर भी एक अच्छा सिग्नल है राइट विल विल रिजर्व दिस इन वन ऑफ द फेब सेशंस ऑफ अ डीप डाइव इनटू सो अ डीप डाइव इनटू कैंडलस्टिक चार्ट्स राइट ऑल राइट सो Uh, I I hope uh, the squeeze is uh, basically the the topic that we were in, right? Squeeze breakout or breakdown, or we have seen lot of different kind of squeeze. The first one we saw is range. This is this is purely our creation. Is not something that uh, is completely out of the world, right? Uh, maybe other softwares may also have something similar to this. But uh, when I say our creation is something which uh, is not a typical formula based on our research and uh, this thing, we have created this thing. Lowest bandwidth is a is, is a pretty commonly well known thing, right? Lot of people in the industry would be using lowest bandwidth, uh, right? Uh, the third one which we have is Keltner, which will co uh, come in a short while, right? So what we have seen is lowest bandwidth, right? So let's see lowest bandwidth breakout. Okay, uh, you can get breakout in the latest tick or in the earlier tick, right? Uh, with lowest bandwidth within last maybe uh, last uh, maybe I'll put five numbers. right play with these numbers what really works well for you so it has given a breakout uh, from the lowest bandwidth in last n ticks right so if you have missed this thing ki mujhe chahiye ki kal kya tha right uh, kal breakout hua tha and there is no way for you to find it so these screeners right will tell you that uh, where did this breakout has happened right is it the latest or is it uh, a earlier period so let's see within one candle right and the lowest bandwidth is in range of last let's say 20 or maybe last 5 uh, let's put uh, so basically what we are trying to find is the lowest bandwidth within last uh, or breakout within last one candle right one or two either today or yesterday and the lowest bandwidth has happened in last five candles so when you look at bsf right so it has given a breakout and the lowest bandwidth was somewhere here right so that's how you can do little bit of more fine tuning little bit of more fine tuning go out here right in terms of uh, uh, this particular indicator lowest bandwidth breakout or breakdown okay so uh, this is one the second is metro brand right it has again given a breakout after a lowest bandwidth right so these are good signals these are good signals there is a consolidation so if you see uh, it 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 has given out of the highest range in last maybe 20 to 50 candles right so that's another confirmation if the volume was little favorable here it would have given you the third level of confirmation right it would have given you third level of conf uh, confirmation and that should give you better confidence so instead of putting maybe let's say uh, i'm giving you very small numbers right that's not the real numbers instead of putting 10 rupees you could put at 50 rupees right uh, depending on your uh, scale of what is uh, uh less money or what is more money what kind of profit are you looking at so uh, that's just an example of me telling 10 or 50 rupees is basically the more amount of confirmation you have the better it is right so there are two or three very good things out here lowest bandwidth breakout uh, highest level in last many candles but the volume is not so good if had the volume been good then you could have got little more aggressive okay so that's something which you can consider yes ma'am a question for you Uh, sir you have shown that a hammer candle something like that na sir yeah on that chart mm -hmm. identify means uh, is there any uh, screener or something uh, such like that we can identify such kind of things 
Yes, yes, very much, ma'am, very much, right? Uh, so basically, if anybody has a question on this, uh, we, we can take it. Otherwise, I'll show where the hammer is. I don't want the hammer, sir. It has formed outside the Bollinger Band, na? Candlestick formed outside the Bollinger Band. Yeah. Is there any scanner available to find out such type of stocks? That is my yes. question, sir. Yes, very much, very much, ma'am. So that's what I uh, I mentioned, right? So in the DIY screener, you can mix and match multiple different uh, uh, indicators or different, uh, basically, uh, uh, technical indicators, fundamentals, and uh, patterns. In the chart patterns, you have a hammer, right? Uh, is the hammer at downtrend, right? Uh, also, you'll have uh, one candle hammer. So just hammer is here, right? So if you mix and match this along with Bollinger Band, you'll get the combination of both. Right. So unfortunately, we couldn't find any today. But uh, uh, the more uh, more stricter so Bollinger Band breakout itself is after a squeeze itself is a rare pattern. On top of it, if you are getting a hammer, that is even rare. Right. So uh, you can find using this software. The the very simple answer is yes, you can find. Hammer. It may it can be a spinning top or it can be inverted hammer or it can be a what? Uh, yes. yes. Yeah. So let's let's. Hammer? Let's, the, let's, add, well, let's let's add all the four right right hammer or any other pattern again there's nothing out here right so you you can you can find these things you can find these things right so once you have an understanding of what hammer is uh, and you have understanding of bollinger band you can mix and match right M multiple different indicators in the same screener okay hope that answers okay, your sure. question yeah yeah, yeah. All right. So uh, basically, what we have seen is Bollinger Band. Uh, two two squeeze we have seen. Number one is the the uh, bespoke uh, application or jo hamara created hai. Uh, number two is lowest bandwidth breakout breakdown. Uh, there's another one which is available in the uh, 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 used by some analyst, right? Where, which it says that okay. So this is potential breakout breakdown, right? So let's see the example before we go to Keltner, right? Uh, so basically, price is below. Uh, below upper band and it is within 1% okay and price is rising for 3 ticks so basically what we have seen is breakout and breakdown right now this is another one uh, which wherein uh, you will see that it has a possibility of a breakout so let's see how we can create it right price rising for 3 tick and price upper band within 1% uh, so let's reset it to get it to the standard level uh, go, going into the technical indicator Going into Bollinger Band, price, close price within, uh, let's say, 1% or maybe let's put 1.25% of upper band, right? That's number one criteria. Number two criteria is price below upper band, right? So, so what we are trying to do is price is just below, price is uh, just below the upper band, okay? So, when we run this one, right? you'll find all the stocks which are within 1% of upper band, right? Within 1% of upper band, right? So uh, that means there's a possibility of breakout. Now, the third condition uh, which is mentioned out here is prices rising for 3 ticks. So what we are doing is along with this, we are getting price also involved, right? Price, uh, OHLC trending, price, close price rising for minimum 3 ticks. Let's run to see if anything is there. Now, uh, in this particular example, in this particular example, price is rising for three ticks and it is within 1% of Bollinger Band, right? Let's look another one. Now, this looks like even better, right? Because uh, it has not breached, right? It's not so volatile as the previous one, right? This was relatively volatile and it has given a false move, right? So this is where uh, you'll perhaps lose some money, right? Uh, in, in this kind of move. So stop loss would be triggered out here, right? So the third example we have is uh, fact, right? So price again, right? You see, this is a better example, right? So there was a squeeze, breakout, multiple breakouts, multiple breakouts, multiple breakouts, breakout, then it retraced, right? And then again, then again. So some, some of you, so I'm not saying that you'll always catch this. Some of you will think that the, uh, this thing, uh, th there's a time to exit, right? So you ha would have perhaps ex exited the stock. Then again, coming here, price is trending up with two gap ups, right? Almost two gap ups and then trending up very strongly with some good volume and it is within 1% of the band, right? That means it's likely it, or there's a potential of it's going up again. Okay. So look at Hindustan Zinc, 
right? Again, it is it is moving towards that direction. It's getting very close to that 1.25 percent of the upper band, right? So price is trending. So there's a potential or there's a possibility where it will cross this band. So you can get a heads up. You can get a heads up that uh, uh, the band is likely to breach, right? This this is a good example. Price is trending up, right? Price is trending up, and this is where you will find this filter. This is where you'll find this filter that. Uh, it's going up and then once it has broken then it has given a very good move right uh, if you see stocks like this which are giving a lot of gap up and uh, gap ups be ready for gap downs also right so the, right so the, these are either uh, okay i don't want to say that right uh, 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 i don't want to say that particular word right i i'll, I'll leave it to you guys right when there are a lot of sudden gap ups gap down right uh, uh, go with a little more caution Right? Go with a little more caution, like gap up, gap down, these kind of things. Right? Go with a little bit more of caution. But this looks slightly better one, right? In in this picture, right, it has given a slightly better, uh, better one where it is it could it could eventually break this. If it breaks this, you will see that the the resistance level is also broken, right? The previous levels. So it can it 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 may be ready for the uh, next higher moves. Okay. Uh, same thing is breakdown, right? Same thing is breakdown. Right, price uh, within lower band and price falling for consecutive n number of ticks. Where the example here is uh, n. Okay, uh, Bollinger Band squeeze breakout strategies. A couple of strategies we have already seen. Right, squeeze breakout. The two strategies that we have seen. Number one is the range breakout, uh, the one which is uh, which we have created, and the second. Uh, so this is squeeze breakout. Right. So we we find that it is in a particular squeeze. Uh, it has given a breakout. Uh, we have already gone through this. So, do you want me to continue on this example, or I can skip to the next session? Right. These are certain examples created for you. Just have a look at it. I'll give you about five to ten seconds before I go into the next slide. Okay. So, a typical uh, a breakout. Right. This this is the one where the breakout is uh, there. Right. So, the next one is. Basically, mixing multiple bands together, right? A uh, mixing multiple bands together to find the squeeze. So, if you see typically, right? Somebody mentioned Punawala. Punawala. Okay. So, if if you see this is Punawala stock, right? So, you see that this is one band, right? So, and then when we plot another band on top of it, which is called Keltner band. So, uh, let's go to Keltner band. Because both these bands uh, can be very confusing, right? When plotted together, so let's try to give it a color, right? Let's give it a color which is very very obvious, pink. And for the other one, let's give Bollinger a color of let's say green, right? So that uh, they, they are very clearly spotted. Okay. So generally, if you see the green one is Bollinger, and uh, and and the pink one, right? Uh, is uh, uh, the pink one is uh, uh, this thing. Uh, Keltner, right? So generally, you see that the, the Bollinger band is far more uh, volatile when it comes to Keltner band, right? Far more volatile when it comes to uh, Keltner, Keltner band. So uh, there are sometimes situation where there are sometimes situation where uh, the Bollinger band is within Keltner band. Generally, you see that uh, Keltner band is within Bollinger band. There are certain times, like in case of Punawala, right? The example which one of you recommended. Uh, is basically Bollinger band is within Keltner. Now this is also called a squeeze, and then after this squeeze, whichever happens, breakout or breakdown, it's likely to go, to go in that particular direction, right? Uh, so that is another strategy of uh, finding the squeeze in Bollinger band. Let me reset this thing and show you where this particular uh, feature is in uh, DIY screener. Go to Bollinger band. Go to uh, Bollinger band within Keltner, right? Uh, when 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 you do the screening, uh, you'll find that Bollinger Band. Okay, so this shows Bollinger Band, right? Let me also add Keltner, right? In Bollinger Band, let me give a color which is a funky color. Okay, we gave green, right? Let's be consistent with the uh, with the two bands. Otherwise, I will also only get confused, right? We give this as pink, and then before we get a request, let me get into the candlestick, right? All right. Now th these are the points where 
the Bollinger Band. Generally, if you see, this band is far more volatile compared to Keltner. Keltner uses ATR as one, one, uh, uh, one of the other indicators, right? So in this case, the Bollinger Band, right, is within Keltner Band. Now, what is Keltner Band? There are many different kinds of bands. I remember uh, in, 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 in the earlier part of the session, uh, we, we discussed about various banks we, where we discussed Keltner also. So similar to, uh, not similar, right? Uh, I mean, visually, uh, visually it looks similar to Bollinger Band where you have an upper band, you have a lower band and you have a middle band, right? The kind of strategies that we follow on Bollinger, some of the traders, they follow on Keltner Band, right? So Keltner Band is less volatile compared to Bollinger, right? Less volatile compared to Bollinger. So th this is where it is. So, uh, what is Keltner? Keltner is just another band, right? So, maybe I'll give you uh, some more examples of some of the bands that are available in the system, right? Uh, so, th th this, is, this is Keltner band, right? So, you see the price movement of Keltner. Some people trade by breakout and breakdown of Keltner band, right? So, if you were on Keltner, uh, you would have seen some breakouts, breakdowns, right? So, there are a lot of trading strategies uh, which you can use uh, top stock research. Uh, for uh, filtering those things in Keltner band also. Okay, so uh, similarly, there are other bands like uh, uh, HL band or Anchian. There are many, many, many different bands you'll see, right? So uh, the focus of this particular session is just to show you, uh, is just to show you uh, Keltner, uh, Keltner and Bollinger together, right? So, sorry. Right, Keltner and Bollinger. So remember, we had given some color coding to these bands. It tries to retain that those color coding, right? Uh, so that you don't have to do it again and again, provided you are in the next chart. So one of the first example that we saw uh, was uh, uh, Bollinger within Keltner. There are a few other examples, Blue Tart, Cipla, right? Uh, so there are quite a few examples where you'll see that Bollinger band is within Keltner. On the direction of breakout, it's likely to move in that direction, right? So these are so there are certain tools which are not so savvy uh, in finding those uh, information like what we have the two other banks, right? So they try to rely on a simpler one, right? So this is mathematically this is far more simpler. Once you have formula of Keltner band, once you have formula of Bollinger band, uh, finding these things are simple, right? So these are much more on the lazier side, if I may say. Uh, without hurting anybody, right? But the other banks which we referred, they are far better quality banks, right? Which are available, uh, which you can use rather than this. This is not a typically squeeze. You get, uh, in, in the other examples that we saw, you saw much better quality of uh, uh, of squeeze, like what we saw in the low bandwidth range here, right? Uh, on the low bandwidth range, you see that much better quality of squeeze are, are here compared to the Keltner band that we saw some time back, right? But for the sake of completion, right, I mean, uh, uh, I did mention Keltner Band, but uh, if given an opportunity, I'll uh, recommend you to use uh, the first squeeze, which is here, right? Uh, retain this setting. If, uh, if you don't understand these settings well, gradually you experiment it uh, with other things and then uh, perhaps uh, one day uh, you will discard these settings and you will have your own unique, own unique setting uh, where you will get better results than what the default setting gives. All right. Uh, so uh, before we proceed, uh, we just have a simple illustration of uh, Bollinger and Keltner. So this is a very simple example, right, where it tells you that this was the point where uh, Bollinger was within Keltner and the breakout is the rest is something which is very obvious, right, in the chart. Okay. Uh, another example of uh, uh, Bollinger Keltner with breakdown. Right? So not saying that this is this does not give you a result, this also gives good results, but the other bands are likely to give uh, much better results. Right? Depending on your comfort, we have given a lot of tools in your tool, uh, toolkit, right? use any of these things. Uh, I think is one of the most exhaustive uh, tools available in uh, any of the technical analysis tool. Right? So uh, make good use of it. Very easy to use Bollinger Band with all these tools. Uh, you can do better than this. Right? Uh, then Bollinger Band with other indicators, we have seen Keltner already, right? Now, when Bollinger Band uh, does a breakout, right? See whether it is with any other thing. Like one of the example, one of the good cases when MACD crosses above zero line. Uh, remember, uh, guys, from MACD session, MACD crossing above zero line, which means that the fast, uh, uh, which which means that uh, uh, there is a lot of bullish trend, right? 
uh, histogram becomes uh, zero and histograms from negative territory it goes into positive ter territory right so that is one thing which you can use uh, this is an example uh, which gives you a combination narrow bollinger band breakout with mcd crossover go ahead and uh, go ahead with this right also we have seen that uh, 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 the price and volume uh, combination price trending again can be good good candlestick patterns can also be a good indicator right or previous support and resistance if previous resistance is broken again a very good indicator right so you can mix and match bollinger band with lot of other indicators much easier than rsi and uh, msd because it's plotted purely along with the price right all right so bollinger band for day trading before we go into day trading uh, sorry sorry just raise the question before we go into day trading this 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 one question there's one question which i need to answer that first before i take the next question okay uh, hard to hear see if you can type yeah thank thank you thank you sima for mentioning that right uh, i see uh, chalakonda uh, salja uh, raising hand yes ma'am sir bollinger band with adx can you show sir how to do it so that uh, i'll just note down okay see adx it tells you trend strength hmm. right it tells you trend strength so i think the best way of doing that right is basically if you see the examples right if you see the example that we mentioned bollinger band trending up right at that point of time you can use uh, adx because that's what it tells you the trend strength right? i mean how you're... to do the by screener that i don't know sir that's what yeah because we have not covered adx right it may not be very very useful oh, for a lot of okay. people out here right adx okay. is trend adx mentioned trend trend strength right whereas bollinger what we are trying to cover here is more on the narrowing side right and some of the breakouts when the break once the breakout happens right at that point of time if adx is let's say above 20 right that would be a good point but uh, such kind of combination let's try to find out if such such kind you may not get a lot of stocks but if you get it it will it'll be really good so let me take an example of price above bollinger band and adx above let's say 20 so you there, there are few stocks right so adx above 20 tells you that it is trending right and so it it does indeed trend right in this particular direction and there's a breakout so you see uh, the price is trending and then there's a uh, this uh, this thing uh, uh, breakout also so this is how you can you can do th uh, the stuff to spot these things but generally you'll not find adx trending very strongly and the price is not within the band right now in this case if you see uh, if in this case, what is it? it's 14, right? So not too good a trend, right? So, so for record, what is the ADX we have to use? ADX is 14, right? The default ADX is 14. Uh -huh. um, for trending, you are telling about 20, now, sir? Yes, yes, 20, 20, yes. For, for uh, bearish stocks, how? My question. The bearish stock is also 20. Right. See, it does not care. It it is trend trend agnostic. मतलब उसको trend से समझ में नहीं आता. अब trend को भी वो बोलेगा, down trend को भी बोलेगा. It will it will tell you the the trend. So let let me give you a very simple example without deviating too much. ADX above 20 or maybe 25. Let me put right. Not all stocks will be up trend. Right. It just tells you the trend strength. It does not tell you anything about where the trend is upward or downward. Downward trend also it will say the higher number. Right. So it just tells you the trend strength. Not the direction of the trend. Right? Okay. Like in, this, in this case, yeah. it is downtrend. So ADX is good, right? In this case, it is uptrend. Again, the ADX is good. It is not only 20, 25, right? It is 60. It's extremely good. It is extremely, extremely good. Right? Now, in such case, if you draw a Bollinger Band, right? So this this would have been a good point of entry, right? The ADX is strong, about uh, 52, and it has given a breakout. So it is a double sort of confirmation. Right, ACC, right? ADX is around 30, 35. Not a very good trend strength, but this is the point, right? Where the trend strength is good and there's a Bollinger Band breakout. Okay. Great. Thanks, Rahul, uh, for mentioning that. Uh, so, any other question on Bollinger Band before we wrap up? It's, we are past eight already. Okay. So, for day trading, as, as we have seen in the previous session also, right? 20 is a longer period. 
Uh, if you are looking for a quick moves within the day, then obviously you'll have to look at a much smaller number. So eight, eight uh, SMA with 1.5 standard deviation would give you more signals. Okay, 13 SMA and 1.5 SMA will also give you a good signal. So, so basically the bottom line, right? If you're looking at a day trading or a smaller in interval, you should be looking at smaller time frame than the standard one. The standard one typically or works best, not only the uh, Bollinger or MSCD 12, 26, 9 or RSI 14, they works best for, uh, for uh, swing trading, right? Uh, wherein a, or a day, uh, so it works best on that particular uh, area, right? If you're looking at a smaller time frame, then you might want to reduce the, uh, uh, reduce the uh, uh, this thing, uh, parameters, right, or configuration. Okay, right. So another thing. Uh, so uh, for 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 small moves, for small moves, you reduce the time frame, right? For a slightly longer duration, you increase the time frame. Right. So instead of 20, you can go to 26 or a higher number. Right. So these are certain numbers used by a lot of analysts uh, globally. Okay. So any questions on this these two before I take any questions from the uh, from the from the chat session? Hello. Yes, sir. So please, please, yes, sir. May I request? Please raise hand. I'll give everybody opportunity one by one, right? So, so that is, that is, that I asked that you my previous question. You know, answered. What time frame is suitable? Five, ten, fifteen minutes for intraday trading in Bollinger Band. See, for, for intraday, fifteen and one hour, right? Use that as pretty much standard. That gives very good quality results. Acha. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, Okay, Nagarajan has a question. We'll try to answer. See, not every question I'll answer at that point of time. But guys, do remember. I remember all those questions and go back in the history, right? So uh, it's just that the rhythm of the session, uh, does, I don't want it to get broken. So sometimes I, I note the questions, but uh, I'll try to answer uh, when, when there's a right moment and when there's a pause between two different concepts, right? I hope uh, it helps. Okay, so day trading and intraday. No, both are same. Day trading is basically you're trading within the day, right? Uh, intraday, uh, so basically uh, they are pretty much similar. They are pretty much similar, right? You're trading, day trading is buying and selling within the day. Right? What, what, why are you suggesting different time frames? Okay, so so basically uh, it, it if you are purely day trader, right? If you are purely day trader, then shorter periods are better. Okay, if you use uh, if you use daily tick to trade within the day, then use a smaller smaller configuration. Instead of twenty, you use uh, the configuration which uh, which we have mentioned, right? Eight and thirteen. So the difference between the two, if you are a pure day trader, right? If you are a pure day trader, then daily moves may not give you that good results. Okay, but if you want to trade during the market hours using tick of the day one day as one tick right then reduce this period okay i i know it can sound little confusing but uh okay and minutes 15 minutes and one hour is good right 15 minutes and one hour is good okay no, sir my question is that means uh if we are using this configuration right that mm -hmm. 8 and 13 mm -hmm. should we go for the 15 and one hour uh, means, 50, uh, if you want to buy and sell on the same day right then mm -hmm. perhaps you should be going on 15 15 minutes and one hour mm -hmm. right 15 minutes if you if you are more aggressive right even shorter period 15 minutes or 10 minutes would be good right if you want to see it it's it's about see the smaller the time frame, the more signals you get, the more trade you'll be able to do. The moment will be much smaller. Okay, right? and uh, this, then the, with this configuration, eight close one point five SD or thirteen close one point five SD uh, is on daily how, tick. Is on daily so tick. How, yeah, yeah. I uh, okay, but for how long we should hold this uh, position till till you get a reversal? See, the, okay. the, the, the beauty, the beauty is. See, there are multiple different concepts, right? Some people go for a specific target. Some people go for specific days. Some people go for specific price target. Some people go for specific percentage target, right? And uh, that's not how a typical technical analysis should be done. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so we write the, wave. Uh, write the wave, write the wave, write the wave. Okay. Yeah? okay. So that's what I was trying to understand means, does this mean that we have to sell this uh, within the same day or this setting if, can also for multiple days? 
नहीं नहीं अगर आपको डे ट्रेड करना है ना सो यू बाय एंड सेल ऑन द सेम डे राइट यू डोंट वांट टू गेट सरप्राइजेस इन मिनट्स एंड वन आवर इज इट दैट्स दैट्स व्हाट आई वुड आई वुड थिंक इट्स अ गुड टाइम फ्रेम या and if we want to hold the position for a long time or ride the wave then this day trading at 1.5 sd can be used uh not really not really for for that you use 20 and 2 okay yeah yeah short see see basically it's very difficult right for you short term may be one or three days right to somebody short term may be 5 to 15 days to somebody short term may be one week to four weeks right it, that's how things change so fine twin uh, a fine tune or tweak the settings so that uh, you get the confidence that see again don't go with the everything that we say in in this things right see uh, uh, compare it with your trading style compare it with your trading style how frequently do you want to trade right and how frequently can you really trade can, how much time can you really spend on trading right accordingly use these settings okay thank you okay is there a better way to have a telegram or whatsapp group at least for the participants uh yes sir we'll consider that okay right bollinger band for swing trading for a slightly longer duration increase the period right so it's it's not like a rocket science a uh, smaller period uh, reduce the ms larger period increase the ms right so 26 and 50 lot of lot of uh, Trade us use for a longer duration, maybe two to six weeks period, right? Fifty day uh, SMA would give you better results. So it's all about it's all about uh, that. Uh, what is the duration of your trade? Okay, uh, Bollinger Band. You can change the period, change the source of calculation, right? So similar to uh, similar to this one, right? So let's remove ADX. Let's get back to our Bollinger over here. You have options. You can use SMA, EMA. you can do it on a uh, 20 period or other period that we discussed change it to other periods some people on on a rising trend right they prefer highs on a down trend they prefer low some people prefer more like uh, uh, moderated uh, values of uh, uh, of uh, a range right high low hlc ohlc right and standard deviation right you can change it so if if you are on a stock right if you are on a stock which does not move very fast right very more like a defensive stock right and you want to see how the bollinger works so change it to 1.5 right so uh, it doesn't really mean that you have to stick to uh, two right so if you already have a position and you want to see how how is it reacting to bollinger band change it to 1.5 right or if it is more volatile change it to 2.5 or maybe 3 right so it's not necessary that it has to fit in 95% of the case different stock behaves differently 95% or 68% what we mentioned or 99% what we mentioned was basically a generalization right so depending on the stock that you choose you may have to uh, use a different one so don't don't publish any of the your personal details here uh, we don't uh, really appreciate because if it turns out to be a video then perhaps you uh, your number will go everywhere on the internet right which we don't want so don't no so basically uh, uh, basically i'm not sure whether we'll do it or not a whatsapp group will have to consider everything that we do we have to look at pros and cons how it works how much time it consumes our time it consumes but the best thing is the best thing is uh, go to the sessions this is where you'll find the sessions details you you can book any of these sessions number 1 number 2 is the contact numbers mentioned below you can get one on one uh, reference with us right for all the premium users okay uh, then do's and don'ts don't want to bore you with these things by this time you are already familiar with this right so uh, uh do back testing right find complementary indicators and uh, those are will be the typical things that uh, we uh, wanted to highlight right with that we comes to end of the session before we say goodbye and wish you all happy new year anything that you want to mention or last last question yeah, same to you sir thank you thank you so wish wish year 23 uh removes all those pandemic and all those war related to the bad news which is surrounding india goes back into its path of 8% gdp or perhaps uh, 10 i'll be more happy if it goes back in 10 <laughs> there's no reason why we cannot go to a higher gdp if there's no external factor right we would have been at a very very good number so maybe i'll just take a small opportunity right of uh, showing you one chart right of where we could be right where we could be i'll show you nifty Fifty, right? Uh, maybe last twenty-five years, right? 
uh, last 25 years. I just draw a trend line. Right. Just see the the trend line which was being formed up, apart from so not, yeah right. Just see the trend line which which is formed. It's not only this year or, or other years, right? See the opportunity. So Corona brought us down. We bounced back much faster. Even during these times, right, the painful times of year 22, we are doing fairly good, right? This is this is where the maximum impact of uh, Russian war was uh, observed, right? So overall, we seem to be in a good position, right? And support becomes resistance, as resistance becomes support, right? So this should act as a dynamic long-term support for our market, right? Very very long-term, like like last 15 years support, right? Or uh, resistance rather, right? So. Uh, looks like that our market is in a pretty good stage and let's think uh, let's hope that it comes back to its original level uh in y23 mr putin and mr zelensky compromises with whatever deal works best for them crude oil price goes down pandemic goes away or it doesn't affect us then we'll be in a very good place right with that with that i'll just uh, wrap up this session right uh all best wishes from tsr team and hope to bring you more presentations or more quality presentations next year and better quality tools next year. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys.